Many local medical students take the opportunity to be translation volunteers at the recent free clinic in Mozambique. A blind young boy defies all odds and is honored with a prestigious award for his ultimate resiliency in life. Welcome to Headlines and Laurie Chen. Thank you for joining us. In Mozambique, Suji's medical team has traveled to another disaster area to conduct another large-scale free clinic for the cyclone-affected residents. This time around, many local medical students seize the opportunity to come and learn from the team of medical personnel, as well as serve as translation volunteers. What a great usage of their extra time off. Pain on the ear. At Suji's medical volunteers hold a large free clinic in Mozambique, they need to rely on translation volunteers to communicate with the patients. My daughter said that we can join you. Uh, I feel very, very happy because to choose what is my specialist in future, yes, and to help people is very good for me. <laughs> They want to help people around them, but they did not have the chance. They know that Zuji is doing good deeds. I told them that I hope young people can stand up and help the people in this country. Medical resources are lacking, and there are few doctors here. The medical students from a Catholic university in Mozambique not only help with translation, they also seize the chance to practice their medical skills. I come here to help people to get more experience, to in the future uh, have a good experience to help other people. They're more familiar with infection control. They know how to protect themselves, and therefore they can help patients more quickly. Today we have been examining and checking and giving health care. The patients are very enthusiastic and uh, we really, uh, we are very happy to have these uh, medical doctors working with us today. As Tima doctors treat the patients mindfully, many people feel deeply touched. This dentist from Central Hospital has not been getting his pay for several months. Despite that, when he heard that Suji is holding a free clinic, he has come to help out. We are not going to receive anything, but it's very nice to help people. That's why we, we joined to the Suji uh, Foundation in order to help people here in the country that suffered from Idai cyclone, you know. It is good for come here to help some people to want to our help. The medical professionals from different countries have joined hands with Mozambique doctors to safeguard the health of local residents. A recent survey showed that 20% of the population in San Bernardino, California, live under the poverty line. In order to provide the timely assistance to these impoverished households, in 2016, City U.S. headquarters started the Diet Mobile Food Pantry Initiative, as well as community-free clinics, and each time more than 200 people will show up to the venues. You're here just for the, uh, for, uh, ice. for ice. Okay, good. The International Medical Association, or TIMA, is in San Bernardino again to conduct free clinic. And dentistry is the most popular among all the clinics. Normally, medical insurance doesn't cover dentistry, so dentistry is useful in the free clinic. We teach people how to brush teeth, and we scale their teeth to prevent calculus and also treat the cavity, so I think dentistry is very important. All fever. San Bernardino is the poorest city among all the major cities in California. It has a high crime rate and also serious problems with the homeless. Debra is an emergency medical technician, and every time she holds a free clinic, she will volunteer to translate for the doctors and patients. Living in this community, you see so many homeless, and it's, there's nothing that I can do for them. But I can tell them, come down to Suchi and get your dental, get your medicine, get your um, acupuncture for pain, you know? And that, I think, is a about the kindest thing that anybody can do is to give them the opportunity to feel like a human being instead of a, a number. Dr. Maria Caminas of Internal Medicine is also a frequent contributor. Because she supports Suji's ideas, so she likes to offer her skill. One, we live local. Two, I believe in choosing. The unselfish desire to to help others, I can see that. So all my, uh, my husbands and 
our little donation, we shifted it all to Tuesday now. Even though we're conducting a free clinic, we carry out treatment as though we were in a regular clinic, so we don't treat the patients in a sloppy manner because we are in a free clinic. We don't have that kind of attitude. Instead, we raise our level higher. The doctors treat the patients with an excellent quality of medical care and also suggest medical culture of respect and love. They hope that after the patients recover, they can also volunteer to benefit the society. In the aftermath of Cyclone Edai, Tsuji disaster relief teams have been non-stop in delivering aid to multiple countries in eastern Africa, one of them being Zimbabwe. After an initial emergency phase, a group of Malaysia Tsuji volunteers have dedicated themselves in conducting a volunteer training course for the local volunteers. They hope through these classes, the local volunteers can get a better understanding of Tsuji's missions. Training Tsuji's local seed volunteers in Zimbabwe became the task of Malaysian Tsuji volunteers, who also used training sessions to support the disaster relief in the country. Zimbabwe is a lovely country. The people, the environment. Yeah, and we need more Tsuji, more people to join Tsuji mission. Yeah, what lack of is we need more volunteers here to help the needy, especially the victim for the cyclone Idai. This is the first time that local Zimbabwe volunteers have undertaken formal training. These instructors from Malaysia are teaching them about Tsuji's four major missions and other concepts. Definitely I'm quite happy because we never uh, come across such lessons like what we are now. We just feel maybe in the near future we have to improve the voluntary work here. We as volunteers, we, our duty is to help the community such so that some, some of them they don't have money to do some odd things. Some of them are odd, so we have to help them said that their life, their life will be easy for them to be. During these training classes, Malaysian Zuji volunteers were responsible for the instruction, but they also learned a lot from this transnational aid work. Money is not important. As long as your life has a very uh, solid, doing those, uh, you always have a, a, a positive thinking, and always smile, happy. What I can see in Zimbabwe is rather than you have a lot of money, but every day you have a sum of things. Both the teachers and students learn through this important activity, as the joy of life in Zimbabwe has spread to these volunteers. Changsha Tsuji volunteers headed over to the Hunan University of Chinese Medicine to personally deliver scholarships to the recipients. In addition, to care for the 25 graduating students this year. Let's take a look at these heartwarming scenes. At Hunan Academy of Chinese Medicine, 25 graduating students and volunteers recite their missions together. This is their last time to receive Tsuji's academic scholarship. Kong Ming has traveled for 10 hours to return from her interning hospital. They've guided me patiently to forget unhappiness in the past. They've taught me Jing Si aphorisms to motivate me to move forward. They're like parents to take care of all my worries for me. Volunteers' companionships are something they will never forget. It has sustained them through the exams and even changed some of their personalities. I used to be an introvert, but after knowing the volunteers, I've become more cheerful and happier. All these volunteers have been very kind to me. They often come to check on my condition, so I must not let them down. Volunteers visit them four times a year with constant phone calls every month to check on them. The love has given positive power to these students. There are nurses and doctors now, and their children in great responsibilities. We hope that they can spread good knowledge as well as take care of themselves, so they can inspire more people. After giving them the scholarship, volunteers also gave them warm hugs to show support for their future paths.
Speaking of today's scholarship recipients, ever since 1997, Tiji Malacca chapter has helped over 40,000 poverty students have a chance at getting an education with the scholarship program. One such scholarship recipient is Gong Jingsheng. He started to receive Tiji's aid back in middle school and was able to finish his studies. Feeling grateful for Tiji's timely assistance, he now dedicates himself to helping other impoverished students in society. Since 1997, Tsuji Malacca chapter has been assisting underprivileged students through the scholarship program so they can continue studying. For over 20 years, over 40,000 students have received the assistance. At that time, Tsuji gave scholarships to poor students in Peifeng High School, Malacca, and I was one of the recipients. Go Chun-Shou's parents suffered from hearing and speaking disabilities, so they could not earn a lot of money. When Go entered the middle school, kind people paid for his tuition, and Tsuji provided financial assistance for two years. When we decided to study at Peifeng, many relatives said that it would cost a lot of money to study there, so we were very struggling with our decision. However, after we had the social resources, we could relax, and I could focus on studying. Coaching Shawn is now a successful farmer 20 years later, and the fate of his family has become better. Go knows that he must pay back to society. I give my vegetables to schools and other charity groups for charity sale. If Zhiji hadn't given me the scholarship, our future would have been very unclear. My life would have been different. I wouldn't have been happy like today. So we are very grateful that so many people have helped us. We must pass on the love and spread it to other people. Be a good person, someone who won't disappoint the society, the race, the nation, and the world. Education changes goes family and also allows other underprivileged students to see their future so they can head towards the right directions. There's a very brave young little boy named Luo Bo Xun who has completely lost his vision due to suffering from eye cancer when he was only four months old. However, being blind has never stopped this little boy from doing anything that he has set his mind to. Due to his resiliency and love for life, he was recently honored with the President Education Award. What a great role model for never giving up in life. He can't see, but he plays the piano well. Lu Boxing's favorite song is You Are My Eyes by the blind singer Ricky Shao. Mm. Mm. He nods with a timid smile. He was found to have eye cancer when he was four months old. After a series of examinations and treatments, he still lost his vision. He has to learn this semester's courses at least half a year in advance. On top of conquering the challenge to study with regular students, he also practices his talents diligently. He has won awards for playing piano and swimming. He has even swam across the Sun Moon Lake last year. I hope I can be lucky in the future and learn as fast and well. Some introvert children were encouraged by him because they think that if he can do it, why can't they? In his heart, losing his vision is just a small obstacle, and it won't stop him from pursuing his dreams. I want to be a president so I can help disadvantaged people to fight for their welfare and support. Bo Xun has won the President's Education Award for his spirit and performances. Despite the challenges, he has an invisible wing that will take him to fly high in the future. Another President Education Award recipient is Zhang Wanting, a sixth grader at the Longyan Elementary School in Yunling. The majority of her family members are all suffering from various chronic illnesses. Therefore, ever since she was in the second grade, she had been the one shouldering all the responsibilities of the entire household. Despite all the hardships, she's still a very positive and academically outstanding child. Let's go meet this amazing child. <laughs> Wan Ting rushes home upon finishing school because a mother is waiting for her. Mm -hmm. 
Ten years ago, her mother became paralyzed due to a car accident. Since second grade, Wan Ting has shouldered the responsibility of caring for her. She washed and blow dries her mother's hair, and she also needs to do chores. However, she never complained. Hmm. She never complains. She always finishes everything I ask her to do quickly. Hmm. Other than her mother, she also needs to take care of her blind grandfather and her physically challenged uncle. Her father seldom came back home, so she has to be the adult of her family. She is the long-term care recipient of Taiwan Fund for Children and Families, and she has filmed a short film with the singer Zhou Lin Tsai. What's your name? Even Zhou Lin Tsai was touched by Wan Ting's maturity. It's a very precious thing that she's able to strive to succeed and study hard in this kind of difficult environment. Her strength and optimism won recognition as she was the recipient of this year's President's Education Award. She said that she's not afraid of hardships, but she hopes her mother can recover soon. In the future, she wants to become a doctor so she can take care of more patients who are in need of help like her mother. Today, we'll take you to meet a life warrior, Wang Weixuan. When he was still in his mother's womb, he has suffered from amniotic band syndrome. This resulted in him having to amputate his lower legs. Despite all the medical operations, he's still living life to the fullest. Let's go meet this wheelchair tennis superstar. Relying on prosthetic legs and a custom wheelchair, 32-year-old Wang Weixuan plays tennis. Despite the difficulties, he really enjoys playing this game and tries to get to every ball. I'm so proclaimed not there of this tennis world, but I actually prefer Andy Murray. He earned the nickname Sonic Kid on the tennis court. His efforts have also led him to win the championship in the wheelchair tennis competitions, both at home and abroad. He lost his feet because he suffered from amniotic band syndrome. Using his hands to move about at home, amniotic band syndrome left him with lesions and many physical problems, as well as cleft lip and palate. At the age of two, his two feet had to be amputated. When he was a baby in the womb, he couldn't rotate as he got caught up in the amniotic band. When he was born, his feet turned out and doctors didn't think that he could walk. This difficult fate made Wang Weixuan shuttle back and forth to the hospital soon after his birth. He had facial plastic surgery, amputation treatment for prosthetics, and the family never gave up hope. I can't carry him forever. Then we took a skateboard and let him climb on top of it and adapt. I didn't want him to carry around his disability in his heart forever. These prosthetic legs have been with him for 15 years, ever since he was 18 years old. The traditional design of these legs is based upon a belt. His long-term reliance on these prosthetics has impacted Wang Weixuan's body. When I walk some 5 to 10 meters, my waist starts to feel very sore, and I need to sit down and rest. This has had a big impact on my daily life. When he uses this, the whole weight of his prosthetic hangs on this belt and his waist. If there's no belt, they will fall down. It may also be to him using prosthetic limbs is not suitable for 30 years, so his thoracic and lumbar spine is already degraded at about a level of a 50 or 60 year old. <laughs> Referred by Taipei Mackay Hospital to the Mennonite Christian Hospital's Prosthetic Center on November 22, 2018, the first hydraulic mold prosthesis measurement was taken. With this hydraulic press device, the error rate has been dramatically reduced to a minimum. That water is like using a million different hands to shape this, and in fact, the shape is actually very close to what we want in the end. After the mold is made, it will be grouted to make a trial cylinder. Through repeated trials, it will be refined to make the patient comfortable. When trying it on, the first thing we do is to make the sleeve comfortable. No matter how expensive the parts are, even the best feet, as long as the sleeve hurts, it will have impact on the other functional parts. That's why it's so important to use the hydraulic equipment. 
I feel that it offers a better fit and actually that it is part of my body. The suction vacuum cylinder drives his prosthetic limb and allows his feet to even leave the ground with an actual feeling of walking. After a few trips, I feel that it saves lots of energy. The swing of the prosthetic limb lets me feel quite comfortable when walking. It does not cause a great burden on my body. This tailor-made prosthetic is like giving him new feet and a better quality of life. And now this man has renewed energy to pursue his dreams. Due to May being the month of gratitude and filial piety, city volunteers have been conducting multiple Buddha Day ceremonies in various communities. Recently, volunteers headed to a nursing center in Jilong and also a psychiatric rehabilitation center in Taipei to accompany individuals with love and care. They all sincerely prayed for a world filled with peace and harmony. City volunteers held a Buddha Day ceremony at Changqing Nursing Home for seniors with mobility issues. Students from National Jilong Commercial and Industrial Vocational Senior High School also participated in the event. The grandpas and grandmas are very passionate. Some of them cannot walk. However, they express their passion with movements and I really like it. Students also sang old songs with the seniors, learning how to interact with the elderly residents. I feel very fortunate being able to give them abundant love and care. While my grandpa and grandma can still move about and talk with us happily, I need to spend time to accompany them. Sincere interaction has brought them closer together. I hope you can do it continuously. Come here again and again to learn to care for seniors. Meanwhile, city volunteers have also held a simple Buddha Day ceremony at Jiren Rehabilitation Center in Taipei, calming the residents' minds. May the family be prosperous and safe. May the family be happy. Most of the center's residents suffer from mental illnesses. Volunteers do recycling with them every week. They've also come to guide them to pray with sincerity. We can learn and in the future, we can give of ourselves like them, all right? The volunteers inspired the center residents to pay tribute to the Buddha and pray for a world free of disasters. Recently, volunteers headed over to the Feng San Liaison Office in Kaohsiung to help remove the 150,000 interlocking bricks in the main square area. These will all be reused again in the next office grounds. Let's take a look at the 13 years of precious memories. Thank you for watching. See you next time.